수지 여기 주님 깊에 손 남기 놀라 펜실 성에 두 발쇼 성에 주단 성기 전남라 전주 발두 단이 갑수지 여기 주님 깊에 손 남기 놀라 펜실 성에 두 발쇼 쇼그리시 모그리 Okay, progress report. Uh, we've done just over half of the folios. We've been adding a lot of appendicitis. <laughs> and uh, I think we can say we can finish the class in five more terms, including this term. So it would be January 2021. Uh, and I think the book will be a healthy 200 pages or a little bit 250. Uh, it'll be a nice size uh, with all the appendicitis, okay? Yeah. The bottom of page 200, we had a, a footnote, and I just, I just fudged something. I mean, I, I didn't, and I threw it together so that I, you know, didn't seem like a slacky McSlackerson, but uh -huh. I, um, I don't know what this uh, bottom of 200, this uh, footnote 130 here. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what the heck that is. I found it in Nolan Pelden, and I tried to translate a bunch of gobbledygook. And, you know, uh, we got to work on it. Yeah, we got to work on that. It's a uh, circle, right? It's a separate topic. Yeah. Uh, Gendon issue. And this, uh, it doesn't relate to the Shugne. It's two separate topics. Uh, so, uh, again, the issue is uh, it's there's three tracks, and when when can you go up to Bodhisattva? You know, can you become an arhat on a lower track and start over again, or can you start in the Tonglam? Or it's twenty permutations. It's called the twenty permutations, and we it's the first book we ever published, actually. Uh, the set of circles from. Uh, Abhisamankar. So, you know, Nawan Pelham probably has them right. Yeah. So we just have to, let me work on it. Okay. okay. And I, it's here, I mean, yeah. unfortunately my translation is also here, but the section from Nawan Pelham is here for you. Good, for yeah. Time. I'm not shy about correcting the, I think. the, uh, <laughs> the translation, but, uh, but uh, it's that kind of thing where it's, it's not clearly listed somewhere, and you probably have to read it carefully, which we can go back and read it if you want. Uh, I just went ahead. Uh, so when I get to, let's see, let me think about it. Uh, so it's called the 20 uh, permutations on the path. Do you go five, five, and five, or do you do two, and then three, and then five, or what are the possible, can you degener degenerate from one of the paths? Okay. Which is useful to know. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And it's uh, unique to the lower middle way because they like the three tracks presentation. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm. I, I think we're going to start at 333, right? True. Okay, uh, please write. Okay. Three's yeah. reading. Yeah. Okay. Do redo three three two or go to the next um, uh, for the sake of the uh she pa du sum she You wanna repeat where we are? You wanna tell people where we are? Sure. What's your text about? Pretend there's somebody in this room from Mexico who, who doesn't know what your text is about. Uh, hi, welcome. Uh -huh. Um we're doing an overview of ancient Indian schools of philosophy and the differences between them. He divided all philosophical schools up into two groups, Buddhist and non-Buddhist. We spent a long time on the non-Buddhist schools. You don't want me to elaborate there? I won't elaborate there. You can read the book. Okay. Um, now we're on the Buddhist section. Uh, he's divided that into four schools. Okay. Uh, the detailists, the sutrists, the mind-only school, and the middle way school, we dealt with the detailists. Um, 
And now we're on to the uh, sutrists. He divides the, the each of these four schools into four groups. So this, uh, the sutras presentation is divided into, do we remember, what is it? The name it's of the here. school, the divisions of uh, the school? Uh, no, the name of the school, the divisions of the school, the actual path as it's presented in their school? I think it's here, no? Isn't it here? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. It's the name of the school, the division school, what they actually think. Okay, the name of the school, the divisions of the schools, and what they actually think. He'll do that for each of the four Buddha schools. We're in the second Buddha school. We talked about the name of the school, and they're called that because they are into sutra uh, specifically. They want to read the original sutras. Um, and they don't want to read... Collections by major students. They're not interested. They're roughly yeah. divided into the sutrists who really like to stick to scripture and the sutrists who like to emphasize logic. I think that's yes. coming, uh -huh. yeah. Uh, uh, we said that. I oh, think. it's already. Uh -huh. I think we said that. But if I'm from Mexico and it's my first class, I will ask Professor Kramer, uh. why bother to study all these schools? I mean, why not just stick to the correct one? It's a... It's a really beautiful... And who taught them? Oh. <laughs> well, well, Lord Buddha taught the Buddhist ones. <laughs> um, though uh, you could argue that he's also now teaching us about the non-Buddhist ones. And it's a really beautiful road map uh, where we're at right now. And you can watch and see what you feel like you agree with. And some of these ideas, as we've gone along the way, seem pretty good, uh, even though they are supposed to be lower schools and supposed to be not quite right. So we can so kind of see where we're at. And then he'll offer us why those ideas might not quite be right. So if we see that, geez, that seems OK, I kind of agree with that, then he'll offer how to get from there to the next point of view. So it's a roadmap to show you where you're at, but it's a roadmap to show you how to get uh, to the higher school and the higher school and the higher school um, to a deeper and deeper understanding of yourself. Explain it in terms of toolbox. Oh, in, t in terms of toolbox. Oh, yeah. It's also a roadmap for your students uh, to know where your students are at. And um, if you know where your students are at, then you, um, you can look in this book and you can figure out uh, what needs to be said to that student to get them up to the next rung on the ladder. He describes it like a ladder very specifically, that one step on the ladder, one step on the staircase comes after the next step on the staircase. And so if you know where your student is on the stairs, then uh, you know the next thing to say to them to get them to the next level on the stairs. So it's like learning a hundred ways of treating a disease. Uh, because the student might, the, every student, the four schools develop because from people who had slightly wrong ideas. And then you see how Buddha dealt with them. Oh, emptiness means uh, nothing matters. And then you see how he dealt with them. And uh, so the, the four schools is a fake presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, the lower three are wrong, uh, but it helps somebody. It will help somebody, you know. Like someone's very angry and you say, yeah, you know, your wife does come from you. Mm -hmm. There are no mental seeds. Try to eat better. Take green drinks, and mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> like that, you know. So it's not wrong, but it's not totally right, but it, it, help, it helps them move up the ladder, that's all. So Buddha invented all these wrong schools to help people go up a little higher. And as a teacher, it's useful to have them all in your toolkit because your patient might need one of them. Okay? All right. That's why we're studying all these different schools. Okay. I had an operation recently uh, for a gallbladder. And they, now there's a new invention. They cut four small, four tiny cuts. This one has a, a light. This is a camera. This is an a electrical zapper. And this is a bag to catch the gallbladder and pull it out. And uh, they used to cut a six-inch thing, and it took a long time to recover. This is 24 hours. And, uh, but there's still people who need that one, uh, that they can't do this one. So that's the four schools. Okay. 
All right. Now there's still people who need the the old way, you know. They they just not ready for this one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. So now we're presenting their actual beliefs in three parts. Yeah. Which is the original state of a person as described by that school, what they got to do to get from that original state to a better state, and what is that better state, meaning what is the result of practicing that path? Yeah. Okay, say she. She. Lam. Lam. Debu sum. She. She. Lam. Lam. Debu. Debu. Sum. So we talk about, you know, a person when they first walk into their first green stretch pen class, What's their, what do they walk in with? You know, how are they mentally, how are they physically? That's called she. It means original condition, you know. Then you work on them. That's called path, path. And, and then Debo, where do you want to take them? You know, on the last day that they leave your green stretch pen program, what do you want them to be like? Oh, I want them healthy. I want them thinking about helping other people and I want them eating well, or thin, or whatever, okay? So, uh, but Mike, I have a question for you. Is he going to describe the result of the path that they think they get? Or is he going to describe the result of the path that we know they actually get with a lower system? <laughs> He's going to describe the first. I think it's both. Or it might even be this, the latter. Let's see. Okay. But keep in mind the possibility we, we did this. We've been through this that he's going to say, this can only take you so far. I, I predict oh, he's going to say, the book, not by the no, the by the end of the second. I, I believe. I'm not sure. Okay. He's going to say, okay, it's a nice system, but it can only take you so far. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Or he might say, this is where they think the system goes to. Okay. Let's see which one, okay? What did they think is the result of their system? And what is really the result of their system? Because it's never what they think if they're a lower school. Okay, here we go. Go. Tamboni. Tamboni. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Kramer discovered something that I didn't discover, which is very good. Okay, so first, the original condition of things, right? Sheja la demani su tangye. Sheja? Yeah, all things in the universe can be divided into two. Into two truths. Uh. I like realities here. I, I know people say truths, but I think reality is more understandable by our audience. And exactly two, right? Nyepa. De. They say, okay, they say all reality breaks down into one of two categories, and only two categories. Number one, Ultimate things which do stuff. Mm -mm. Adverbial. Ultimately performing function Yeah, so things. Ultimately doing stuff in yeah. ultimate reality. Uh, ultimately reality? Yeah, yeah, they say that. Yeah. Things which function, function in an ultimate sense uh -huh. is the definition of ultimate reality. Uh -huh. Things which do their thing ultimately uh -huh. is the definition of ultimate reality. Yeah. I think that we could say they would say fire burns. Yeah. And no one made it that way. It's just the nature of fire. Fire burns. Okay? Fire burns. It, it's part of what fire is. It burns. Okay? They would say that. Okay, next. So, uh, and, and like that. Stuff yeah. That can't do stuff. Those, yeah. Those things are. Deceptive reality. Yeah, basically. things that don't do things really. Mm -hmm. How about really? Things that don't really do anything, really do. those are called deceptive reality. And in Buddhism, deceptive reality means reality, it's real, but it fools you. It fools you. It gives you a wrong idea. Okay. And then he quotes. 
Yeah. Okay, good. Translate. Um, oh, oh, yeah. well, what's Namdo? Uh, oh, Namdo is the Vamana Vartika, the commentary on the book called Valid Perception. Good. Which school was it written from? This school. Yeah, second school. It's the second school's Bible. Okay, yeah. Uh, ultimately, uh, yeah, it's those things which are, uh, which ultimately can do stuff, can yeah. function. Uh-huh. Are and there, those things are, they exist ultimately. Uh-huh. Uh, they are ultimate yoga. reality. Yeah, they are ultimate existence. But why does he say ndir? Ndir, uh, yeah, them, them things, no? No, it's lakata. In this system, in our system, uh, okay, wow. in this system, he's allowing that there might be other systems. Okay. Yeah, and then do. Um, other stuff is yeah. deceptive. Good. Okay, other stuff is lying to you. Okay, other stuff is lying to you. Okay. And maybe the fact that he's glossing this is then not yet. Exactly. It, it supports the idea of translating as reality, as opposed to truth. True truth, it's uncomfortable for a long time, and then you get used to it, and then you expect it. But it never did make sense. <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. Is it satya? Yeah, it is, but it means reality. It's similar to the word for truth, but that's another story. Yeah, good. Gindi? Uh, cause and effect. Um, give me some reasons why we knew it couldn't be tongue here. Two, two reasons are pretty obvious. Why we knew this wasn't tongue and had to be changed. Good. KYI can only come after D or S. Okay. So that's one alert. One, and there's another T down here. <laughs> so probably one of them is wrong. Okay. So you get clues inside of a sentence and you have to be sensitive to them. Okay. All right. And what's the third thing that you know about the Tibetan character? Extremely similar. They're extremely similar. Okay. Okay. So, Gyunde, now I, I wanted to draw your attention to Pen Nu. Uh, because although we have to look at, maybe Adam could look it up. Uh, where is Adam? Uh, look up Gyu Tinyi. Okay. R G Y U. Yeah. And I believe they use the verb pen in the definition of cause. The definition of a cause is something which helps another thing. The, the verb is pen. The, the definition of a cause oh, yeah. is that which contributes to the other thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, harm is the opposite of a cause. <laughs> I'm just saying uh, there's echo here. Do you know what echo is? Um, when we did the uh, cover from the seri- first series of translations, I oh, imagine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a marketing thing. It, it's a thing for Gina, you know. Uh, when I, when I, in, in those days, 100 years ago, the most famous classical series was called the Penguin Classics. And uh, they, all the books had the same design on the cover. So I stole it and I changed it slightly. And I called it Asian classics or something like that. So uh, that's called echo in marketing. People will look at it, and they don't. It's not conscious, but they will be attracted to it because it looks like the Penguin classics. Okay. Okay. 
Did right. you find some definition I, thing? Okay. Well for you. It's, uh, Does it have a pen in it? Yeah, you, you Nah, then that's not the one I wanted. Okay. <laughs> huh? Oh, he's throwing in the word pen because oftentimes in the definition of cause, you have the verb pen, which means to contribute towards or to help. Uh, but what he's saying here is uh, just generally to affect other things, whether for good or for bad. Uh, that can only apply to mupos. Only functioning things can help something else or hurt something else. Only if a thing functions can it contribute to or block another thing. Okay? You okay? He's just trying to give examples of uh, these two things, one thing causing another thing, or one thing hurting or helping another thing can only happen with functioning things and would be incorrect with non-functioning things. Now be careful when you translate that because you don't want to allow for non-existing things. Well, maybe. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah, it should cover it, in fact. Uh, let's see. OK. okay. Uh, well, if the emphasis is on, on Dunjin Nupa, though, right. I think Ngume, the emphasis on Dunjin Minupa, <coughs> and not on non existence. Non existent things also are Dunjin Minupa, as we yeah, learned in our text could be. specifically, which is the school. Could be, OK. Right. Anyway, the point is there's two meanings of Ngume. One is to be unreal in the sense of don't exist, and one is to be non functioning. So they're not you have to decide which one you're going to use here. He seems to be emphasizing functioning when he says one thing causes another, or one thing hurts another, or one thing helps another. Okay, anyway. Yeah. Well, he's so functional right here. Okay, anyway. They believe that all functioning things do what they do really or ultimately okay think of really for dun damper here okay uh okay keep going uh, so um that's because of that mm -hmm. um they say that uh functioning things yeah um yeah um yeah we've been saying it Right, but the manifestation of a thing. Outer instances of a thing or something. Uh, things that work. Do, do you, oh, things brought about through the convening of causes and conditions. Good, nice. Uh, produced, uh, produced things. Um, and uh, ultimate truth all mean the same thing. Ultimate reality are all the ultimate reality are all synonyms. All, all synonyms. Are all okay. Synonyms. Now I think where you have to draw attention to the reader yeah. here is the day chair. That's a big thing. Because uh, all functioning things do what they do really, and not coming from me, fire for example, therefore these all are synonyms. I think you've got to chew that, you've got to think about that. That's because it's not obvious why. Okay. why. Why? Because they really work should they be called the manifestation, the production, the ultimate reality? Ultimate reality, okay, I can deal with that. But why is it a logical flow here? Okay. And I think mainly he's connecting the dun dum to the ngupo. And the other two are dessert. Okay. Okay, so this is probably the time that we have to talk about this, this wrong issue. You, you, uh -oh. you say manifestation, and to me it makes a lot of sense in the higher school. But in this school, I'm not sure that manifestation makes sense for Rangsen because it's kind of working the other way. For them, there is a Rangsen that's out there that causes you to have a Chitsen in for them. So in a sense, they would describe the Chitsen as a manifestation of the Rangsen. I don't know that they do say that. Uh, uh, because I mean, the way I Rangsen picture it is, is that... real. It's ultimate reality. I don't know. The, the way I picture it is simpler. Uh, I have a picture of a pencil. Yeah. I have a picture of a cup, and then there's a real cup. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, when I close my eyes and imagine a cup I'd like to buy, yeah. that's a chitsen. And then yes. this one out here is a ronsen. So but I don't, wouldn't say that one caused this one. Well, what's it a manifestation of? My, it's, it's one version of my idea. But it's not manifested by your idea. No. Right. No. But it's an embodiment. You can say oh, embodiment. I, like I mean it as an embodiment. That's what I mean when I say manifestation. Okay. I don't mean that my mind is sending it. Okay. I mean that it's the embodiment of an ideal. Okay. That's yeah. all. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. This okay. looks like a cup should look. Cool. Okay. Cool. And that's big thing in this school, because the ideal, the ideation, you can call it. Uh -huh. uh, you can call it archetype. Yeah, what your mom told you. Like in this school, that is... The idea is what we're just... Perfect. Unchanging. Right. Never changes. Yeah. Never changes. And this one can break. Okay. I did an interesting thing in Japan when I went there, because my teacher, who first taught me Buddhism, was a uh, scholar of Japanese Buddhism. And he, trans he was the first translator of some medieval Japanese Buddhist poetry. And his teacher was Eliada. And his teacher was Jung. And his teacher was Freud. So you're in this uh, lineage. His he was the main student of Eliada, who was the main student of Freud. Uh, Jung, who was the main student of Freud. So, um, and they all had this thing about archetypes. Uh, and it was passed down. And uh, it very much fits with this school, I think. Yeah. So anyway, it's kind of fun to play with that. Because they each, they each twisted it a certain way, which different Buddhist schools do. <laughs> so we had a fun time in Japan. You were there, I think. Yeah. And you that, taught, uh, taught it with the Japanese. Uh, yeah, I used, uh, I used his poetry, Saigyo's poetry. Yeah. Saigyo. OK. All right. Keep going. <laughs> Uh, so, ideations or archetypes? Or I like archetype, but I grew up with archetypes, yeah. so, I, you know. Right. I don't know if it's the same for everybody else. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, so, archetypes, uh, things which are uncaused, or things which don't come about through the convening of causes and conditions, and yeah. uh, deceptive truth are also not involving the same thing. Yeah, or deceptive reality. Uh, I would only say that... Uh, be careful when you say Duma Chur. Yeah, Duma Chur. Because you, you kind of have to say an existing thing which didn't occur through the oh, causes okay. and conditions. Yeah, right. Okay, yeah. be careful with that one. That's right? Good. Why? Because uh, rapid horns also Yeah, rapid horns also didn't. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's important to say existing things. Okay. okay. In. Uh, he did not listen to me. Yeah, that's true too. Okay, go. Good. I just had some fun with this. Um, Shell shell ja means. It's not sh yeah good all the things you could consider, are all considerable things, all objects of consideration which is everything, uh, can only be divided into two. There's on two no less no more, and they are uh, yeah they are actual embodiments of ideas or ideas. Uh, but 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 notice the notice how he draws a conclusion, and therefore all correct perceptions must be either direct or or, or indirect. Logical is one of the types of indirect. Well, J is J part. Yeah, right. Right. Means following from concept. Sometimes it means following from scripture. Also, J part. It is, yeah. Yeah. What do you want to call it? Indirect? It's not deductive, I like. Well, but it, that's one of the types of... You can deduce things from convention. 
I'll, I'll consider it, but I'm not sure it's going to hold up. Okay. Uh, that's, that's a good, that's, that's some support for that. Idea. Yeah. Okay. Ngun uh, so anyway, Ngun means directly see it with your eyes, ears, nose. J means you figure out that it's there through one of three different ways. Uh, that's all. But why, why is it, why the instrumental? Because there's two kinds of objects, there's two kinds of perception. What's the implication? Well, that you see one with one and one with the other. Good. Which is which? I would say that you see um, the round embodiment with your direct perceptions, and you see uh, archetypes with your indirect perceptions. Yeah, something like that. But he seems to be, because of the pay, I'm just trying to say, because of the instrumental, he seems to be drawing a parallelism. You know? Okay. I'm not sure if that's going to hold up either, but anyway. Shen Yang. Yu Dong Yu Chenki Yezu. Yeah. They have many different ways of describing subjects and objects. And I'm not going to cover it here. If you want more detail, he says go to Du Xiong. He doesn't say Dora. But you have to know. He means Du Te Xiong. Okay. So Dora is what? Collected topics? Football playbook for debaters. His is the best Dora of all time. His book is the best, in my opinion. Uh, the colloquial name is Dura, but the lit literal sound is Duta. Duta. Okay. I was I was reflecting that draw is kind of a joke, a pun. Why? Chura. Yeah, the word for debate ground has the same word in it. You know? Why call a book? Offense. Uh, so it's a group of logical subjects uh, made into one group, fenced in, as Jeff was talking about. It's a, so the word for a logic textbook in, the, in Buddhism is uh, topics fenced in. But I think it's a, yeah, or a monk. But I think it's a pun because the word for debate ground has the same word fence in it. Okay. The classics, uh, yeah, the literature on the literature on. Uh, I would say uh, collected topics, the classics of the collected topics genre. The major books of the collected topics genre. When you say shun, the implication is there's other classics. Sorry, collected topics books which are not so shungi. You lost the syllable in between those two when you said it. Du Yeah, Dura. I'm just saying he left out a syllable here. Dra. Which is normally pronounced Ra. Dura. I'm studying Dura. What did you say? Oh, Du Yeah. Classics of that genre. Okay? All right. Shung. Uh, you should send to Shepichao. You can learn this greater detail from those other books. It means I'm too lazy or I don't have time to explain it to you. Okay. He did. 250 books like this. Well, the, his real story is quite compelling because um, he had some close friends and his mother died uh, altogether and he went into retreat and wrote and went crazy writing and he refused to see people and probably that's when he produced all these works later somebody talked him into the local governor talked him into coming out of retreat and starting a monastery and then starting a tantric college and to feed those he wrote more books <laughs> okay, so nice story Okay, go. Take this word. Um, 
Translate. Um, well, I'm good with the first part, which is neither this school nor the um, first school. Is yeah. the first school, except foundation consciousnesses or uh, afflicted consciousnesses. Yeah, so all those conscious number seven and eight that we took two years to talk about and that we're still proving in his class, they say, ah, oh, that's all be it. We don't accept any of that stuff. Yeah, we don't accept those. Um, you see, I would say, but on points that they agree on, uh -huh. it's mostly what I already covered in the Vibhachika. Okay. So if you want to talk about what they agree on, yeah. just go back and read the Vibhachika thing I just wrote. Okay. okay. So they accept most of that. So the implication is the only thing they don't agree on that. Yeah, the big thing they don't agree on. Well, he's going to talk about something else also. No, but they do agree about that. They agree yeah, that they, they don't agree. They agree that they don't agree. So they mostly accept this, the beliefs of Vibhashika? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um. okay. Yeah. Including, I guess, their presentation on Pumpo's and Tom's. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I think he wants to say, because that's the big achievement of the Vibhashikas. Yes. That's the first chapter of Stanley's book, Pumbo Kam Kijin. That's the categories. The five heaps, the 18 categories, the 12 ayatollahs. That's their big achievement. The first chapter is their big achievement. The fourth chapter is also, the karma chapter is unbelievable. But so in terms of the sheet, the, the original condition or whatnot, they... Yeah, they yeah. The, uh, they have a bit the vast majority of the Vibhachika yeah. presentation, they also agree. Yeah, they agree on. The, the foundational ideas are the same. Mm. Okay, yeah. <coughs> now, as far as their path, their version of the of spiritual practice, mm -hmm. second school's version of spiritual practice, Pangja. Yeah. yeah. Well, what you have to nowadays, I like get rid of or eliminate inside of you things you got to get rid of inside of you. Pangja ni chida mao dan tumbo. Yeah, they agree with the first school. What you have to get rid of. Uh, two divisions to the presentation of the PA, uh, which is going to be what do you got to get rid of and what is the goal? Or, or what, sorry, no, what does the path focus on? Okay, this mikpa isn't goal. This isn't mikpa isn't migyu. It's uh, what do you have to focus on? Okay. Two parts. So here we go. As far as what you got to get rid of to succeed spiritually, they agree with the first school. Okay. Now, as far as what you have to focus on to get there, okay. they say, uh, and, and specifically the um, yeah, the sixteen aspects that beginning with that include good um, you know, the impermanent first the first truth good. And, but then he adds a very important single syllable. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that okay. and only that is the main focus of spiritual practice, the 16 aspects, which Gelsen says. Don't even exist. Don't even exist. Don't even exist. But he, this Nyi is, is very important to translate. Mm. They focus exclusively. One and only thing to focus on is the 16 aspects. Okay? All right. And how do they feel about Lam Nge? Well, Lam Nge, Yewa, Jae Kyung, Sa Ch 
Good, good. They do differentiate between five separate spiritual paths. Yeah. All spiritual evolution yeah. must go along five stages. Yeah. They agree to that, but, but can uh, Just like the previous school, they the, don't accept ten uh, Bhuvis levels. Bodhisattva levels. Uh -huh, and they don't have a presentation of an enjoyment body of an enlightened being. Yeah, yeah. I don't know about that. So we did say that when we covered Vaishnava. Yeah, anyway, that's the 112 marks, really. 30, 32 major marks, 80 minor marks. The implication is they somehow don't agree with that. The headquarters body that has all these marks in the heaven, they, they don't buy it. Something about it, they don't buy it. Go figure. Chew on that. Tell me what you come up with. Go up to the comma. Go up to the comma. I'll give you a clue. The car is a dingy grammar case. Um, no. Nope. And take the shik as chik. Or take it as bashik. Gashik. Some. Some of them dupa. Some of these guys reportedly. Okay, sumba. Reportedly. Some of these guys do believe that the Mahayana Sutras were spoken by the Buddha. Even though it's a Hinayana school. Reportedly, he says, you know, I've heard that some people said that there are a few sutras who agree that the Mahayana scriptures were spoken by the Buddha. Also the uh, and if that were the case, mm -hmm. they turn out. That's true. then. Um, uh, then if that's true, then. Um, then obviously. Then wouldn't they have to say that good. the four levels and the enjoyment body of a Buddha, wouldn't they have to accept that? Yeah, good. Good. So uh, let's do the whole sentence. But uh, reportedly, there's some of them who believe that the Mahayana Sutras were spoken by the Buddha. And if that's the case, then since those books talk about the ten bodhisattva levels and the paradise body, there must be cell. You know, yeah. there would apparently be some sutras who accept these ideas okay, so in this that they exist. Uh, it's, it's obvious. Okay, it's clear. Okay. It, if, okay, right there, if it's the case, yeah. as some people have claimed, yeah, right. that they agree with some of the Mahayana scriptures, yeah. sure. then, they have to have some for them. then clearly have there have must be some of them right. yeah. who believe in the Buddhist Paradise body, yeah, right. and who believe in the ten bodhisattva levels. Cool. Uh -huh. Okay, but he he phrases it all as being tapa Oh, it's not true. We'd have to oh, look more into it. We have all one school. Everything goes to one. Nah. Yeah, we would. Have if to it were the case, yeah. it's all theoretical. Yeah. Oh. In the theoretical case, oh. that there were sutras who accept Mahana sutras, then in that theoretical case. There will, there will have to ha there would also have to be sutras who believe in the ten bodhisattva levels right. and the paradise body. Even though I just said that the sutras don't believe in those two things. Well, no, if they accept that, it is the word of Well, those books which mention those things, <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, it could be. That's true. Okay. Let's keep going. Yes, 
Yong, sorry, uh, Yong Duk Kyung, you know. Yeah, just the language here is a little delicate, okay? The wisdom which perceives that there's no self nature to the person. Okay? The wisdom which perceives that there's no self nature to the person as opposed to <laughs> things. Mm-hmm. That's, they say, the ngoo of the lam to dua. Yeah, that's the essence of the path to freedom. You figure out that you as a person don't exist self existently. That's the essence of the path to liberation, according to this school. Uh, and uh, what, is, what does it mean in their school when they say that the person has no self-nature? What's it mean to them? Well, that's another point. Yeah. Okay, what's it mean to them? Oh, and this is, you know, Venerable Udpala's specialty by now, because she had like 500 pages on it. Uh, that the person could be Rankya Tupa? Self-standing? Substantial. Yeah, good. Substantial in the sense of self-standing. Perfect. And, okay, they are empty of that. The emptiness where a person is empty of being self The emptiness of a person in the sense of being empty of being substantial in the sense of being not self-standing to them is their version of emptiness. Uh, things like that. Because they might be also referring to chik. Tak, tak, and chik. Tak, chik, rang, wang, chin. He's giving one example of three. How's that? And the, the, the very crucial word here is the day after Tongni. What's that mean? That kind of, that version of emptiness. Okay, so you got to hit this day. you got to slam on that day. And that version of emptiness is for them tatva, suchness, and yongdu, totality, which is the mind-only school's uh, word for emptiness. So you ask the school number two what the emptiness in the school number three is, they'll say it's the fact that the person is not self-standing. It has nothing to do with blue being outside or blue being inside or refrigerators or... Okay. <laughs> okay. Is there any reason why... It, sorry. It would make sense if they put a shake after Tom or Young Drew because it's just like continuing the same thought. Tom and Drew Kyung. Yeah. Tom and Drew Kyung. Tom and Drew Kyung. Tom and Drew Kyung. It, he wants a bigger pause because he's attacking a new school. Oh, oh, this is yeah, yeah, yeah. This is their version of suchness. Oh, and by the way, this is this is their interpretation of the mind only thing. So he wants to karwa. He wants to isolate that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there can be, there can be. But I think here it's intentional to pick on the mind only school. Right? Okay. Ah, now I have to go home and take a nap. I'm so sorry. Uh, it's a favorite thing for old parts. Uh, Stop here. See what this see what this keyboard does? It drives me crazy. No, that's a keyboard. I get it all the time. It drives me crazy. I, I'm gonna. I might have to change. You think they'll put out a good a good machine soon, or that's it? Is that it? Is that the end of Apple? Dang! I was hoping they could just wait. Yes,
Uh, thanks, I had a lot of fun today, and thanks, thank you for, thank you for doing all this making...